Ladies and gentlemen, the time has finally arrived. You guys have been absolutely relentless asking me to do an updated manga collection tour. And I think that it's finally about time that we did one. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Promise. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now today, of course, we are doing the highly anticipated manga collection for 2022. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time talking here at the beginning of this video, just because trust me, there'll be plenty of me talking throughout this probably very long video. But I just wanted to say a few things right at the beginning, but I will be posting down below in the description, kind of an FAQ section talking about the kinds of shelves that I have, you know, how much of my collection I've actually read, how many volumes specifically do I have. But I've been collecting manga for about three years at this point. Time really does fly. It feels like just yesterday, I had like half of a shelf filled up with a bunch of random volume ones. And here I am today sitting at over 1000 volumes total. But before we get into the manga collection, if this is the first video of mine that you are seeing, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more amazing manga videos just like this. So without any further ado, let's get right into the manga collection for 2022. All right, so let's get started with this here's updated Mon collection tour for 2022. Now I do have three bookcases here in my room and the rest of my collection, my two other bookcases are at my college apartment as well as the rest of my manga. So we'll kind of be in two different locations for this video, but first we're gonna get through all the manga in this room right here, starting off with this brown shelf at the top here. The first manga we have is Battle Royale volumes one through 15. This is just such a fun series. One of my favorites, you know, action series with a bunch of gore over the top violence basically about this group of middle schoolers who basically get kidnapped and are forced to have this battle royale for the entertainment of the world on television very dark again very over the top and violent but honestly it's a pretty fun series that i enjoyed quite a lot next to that we have knights of sidonia volumes 1 through 15 in the vertical singles this is complete by tsutomu nihei this is a really interesting sci-fi series about these people who are on this spaceship, they're the last humans left, and they basically have to fight against these aliens that are constantly evolving and shape-shifting. There's a whole lot of politics beneath the surface. Just a really interesting manga. Not my favorite from Tsutomu Nihei, but still a pretty solid manga series, nevertheless. Next to that, we have Scryed volumes 1 through 5. I really haven't gotten into this one yet, but I mean, at 5 volumes long, I couldn't pass it up. Below that, we have... Lone Wolf and Cub, volumes 1 through 28. We have the rest of the volumes behind 28 here. But yeah, Lone Wolf and Cub, I have finally read this series after a couple years of putting it off. I finally read this and really enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of sparked a new interest in samurai genre, especially in movies. Just a classic story about a man with his son traveling, you know, doing jobs, killing people. And then eventually at the 15 volume mark, it gets into a really interesting story. Um, yeah, highly recommend this one. Hopefully we get a Dark Horse Deluxe for this eventually. Uh, fingers crossed, because that's just such an amazing series. Below that, we have Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin in these absolutely beautiful hardcovers. Volumes 1 through 12 complete. This was my first introduction to the Gundam universe. And man, was this a great place to start. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Char is one of the best characters and antagonists I have ever read in manga. Just absolutely beautiful artwork. And I absolutely love these additions. The covers, the spines are all beautiful. I get a lot of questions actually on, on my videos saying, what is that beautiful series to your left? And uh, yeah, Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin, not only does it look beautiful, but it's just a great sci-fi series in general. Speaking of a very great sci-fi series, we have Bokurano Hours Volumes 1 through 11, yes, including the very elusive Volume 3. It's just so hard to find this, and it's a real shame because Bokurano is such a great series, basically about these kids who go off to a summer camp and find themselves signing a contract into this death game, basically. We have to pilot this giant robot and fight against other groups uh, in similar situation on other planets to save Earth with a little bit of a twist. I won't spoil anything, but this is a very dark series and uh, it's still one that I would highly recommend because it's a quick, addictive read. And uh, yeah, if you can find this pesky volume three, I would highly recommend picking up this series. Speaking of pesky series to pick up, here we have volume one of Made in Abyss. I really enjoyed this and I want to pick up more, but goddamn, this series is just so hard to find in stock at the moment with the whole coronavirus 
manga pandemic, you know. We've all been living through it, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have also had trouble picking up Volume 1, or I guess other volumes of Made in Abyss, but you know, I'm still going to play the waiting game and hopefully pick up more of Made in Abyss in the future. Right below that, we have 20th Century Boys Volumes 1 through 22, and Volumes 1 and 2 of 21st Century Boys. This is the complete set in these singles, and this is just my favorite Naoki Urasawa series by far. I know all the monster stands and fans in the comments are going to get real upset by hearing me say that, but in my opinion, this series is just in a league of its own. From the amazing cast of characters to the compelling story and mystery aspects, I mean, I just absolutely love this series for so many reasons. I'm also super glad to have the completed set of the Viz singles, just so beautiful, the red, white, and black really make it a pop out from the rest of my manga collection. Another Naoki Urasawa manga that we have here is volumes 1 through 8 of Pluto Complete. Um, it's kind of sad that these volumes are somewhat hard to find right now just because this is such an amazing series as well. This is a retelling of the greatest robot art, I believe, from Astro Boy by Osama Tezuka with a unique style and of course artwork by Naoki Urasawa in Pluto. Highly recommend this. It's a pretty quick manga, but lots of motions. Lots of action and mystery, highly recommend. Right next to Pluto, we have Volume 1 of Dog Ningan. This is the original printing. Still smoking on that Jeff Bezos pack for censoring it. Fuck Amazon, but this is such a unique and funny series put out by an independent uh, American creator, and it definitely shows because it's very crude, lots of profanity, it's very violent, but it's just so much fun. Really need to get the second volume of that series because I believe it's out right now. Below that, we have an absolute classic. We have Vagabond Volumes 1 through 37 in the Vizbigs. Of course, I gotta mention these beautiful, beautiful mural spines on these Vizbigs. A lot of people I see complaining about the quality of these, but personally, I've never run into any issues with the binding, and overall, I think this is a great reading experience. As for the series itself, I mean, what can I say about Vagabond that has not already been said? Just a classic samurai manga with absolutely beautiful artwork. Very sad that volume 37 is probably the last volume that we'll ever get of this, but you know, I'm still holding out hope that eventually Inoue will come back and finish this series, but you know, we already kind of know how it ends, so yeah, I'm not going to hold out too much hope for that. And right next to Vagabond, we have yet another Hood classic manga series. We have volumes 1 through 6 of Hiroyo Oku's Gigant, obviously the creator of Gantz, my favorite manga series of all time. And while Gigant is not quite the quality of Gantz. It's still a super fun series, nevertheless, uh, very etchy at times, but also has some real emotions and actions and stakes. It's just such a fun manga series. I love every time these volumes come out. Super quick reads, but still a ride to remember, nevertheless. Next, we got my little GTO shelf down here, starting off with volumes 1 through 9 of GTO 14 Days in Shonen. Low key, I like this more than the original GTO. It just kind of has this darker tone than the original. Still really messed up at times, which may turn some people off, but you know, I still enjoyed it nevertheless. Next to that, we have GTO The Early Years, volumes 1 through 15 complete. Haven't gotten into this one yet, but I've read GTO. I've read 14 Days, so this one is next up to read. And next to that, we have Stargazing Dog. If you know, you know, this is such a sad comic right here. Um, I recently had to put down my childhood dog like a week ago, and I don't think I could ever read this again just because it is so freaking sad. But if you're a dog owner looking for a tearjerker, I would highly recommend Stargazing Dog because it is pure quality. Moving on here to the second bookcase, we have volumes 1 through 25 of GTO Complete. I think that this series is a little bit overhyped, but I still enjoyed it quite a lot. It's a very interesting story with one of my favorite manga characters of all time, of course, that being Onizuka. Really fun, but I cannot say this is for everybody, so if you're looking for a funny, very mature manga with very crude and sexual humor, then I would highly recommend you check out GTO. Next to that, we have Sanctuary by Sho Fumura, illustrated by Ryuichi. Ikigami. I would open up this book and try to show you some of the classic vintage artwork, but I know this video would get taken down just because there is a good amount of nudity in this series, but such a great series about these two guys who one take the underground and one takes the politics route to try and reform Japan just so they can make an overall positive impact on Japanese society. Really interesting series, lots of action, guns, you know, badass Yakuza action, so highly recommend Sanctuary if you guys have not read this yet. Next to that, we have Emerald 
and other stories by Hiroaki Samura, the author of Blade of the Immortal, one of my favorite manga series of all time. This is a collection of short stories. Obviously, I have a Western one here, and then we have some really odd other side stories. I believe the Emerald is out of print at this point in time, but if you guys find this out in the wild, I definitely implore you to check it out because it is very interesting to say the least. Below that, we have volumes one through five of Emma in these absolutely beautiful hardcovers. This was one of my Grail series last year that I just really wanted to pick up, but volume four specifically is just impossible to find. It actually found this volume for $8 shipped on Amazon just randomly one day out of the blue. So I had to pick it up and now I have Emma completed these beautiful Yen Price hardcovers. Haven't gotten to this one yet, but I plan on reading this very soon as it's coming up in my manga TBR. Next to that, we have Kara Mori's Anything and Something, which is a collection of short stories. Again, a very rare book that not a lot of people have, but I was lucky enough to find a decent deal for it on MangaSwap. So I decided to pick it up. I haven't read this yet. I'm just gonna read um, Emma first before I get into this one, just because I feel like I should have a better idea of Kara Mori's style before I get into a short story collection. Then we have volumes one and two of Bride Story, again, by K.R. Mori. Heard a lot of amazing things about this historical fiction series, some great artwork, and apparently a great story. So I'm looking forward to getting more of this and reading it this year. Next to that, we have my Shuzo Ashimi stuff. We have volumes one through seven of Blood on the Tracks, a really creepy series about a mother and son who are just way too attached, or rather, the mother is way too overprotective to the lengths that she goes is just absolutely insane. A really bone chilling story that is currently ongoing. I actually don't have volume eight, which I probably should have picked up before this video, but it is what it is. Really love this series. Next to Blood on the Tracks, we have my favorite Shuzo Shimi manga. Of course, The Flowers of Evil, volumes one through 11 complete in the vertical singles. It's just such a fast paced, addicting manga story. Really messed up, had a quite an impact on me. Just, again, really creepy stuff that Shuzo Shimi is just so good at with his series, so I highly recommend this one. If you can find it, or if you want to get the perfect collection, I believe those are really good additions by Vertical. Next to that, we have the two NY NYC one-shots that are exclusive uh, from the Denpa booth. Here we have Miss Kusakabe, and Waltz is the other one. Haven't read these yet. I really should, because it'd probably take me like five minutes, but I've heard some mixed things about these, so probably not worth the insane dollar amount that people are asking for these on eBay. But you know, haven't actually read these yet, so I guess I can't have an opinion. And of course, here we have volume one of Happiness on top. Um, haven't gotten in this one yet, but I've heard, again, some great things about happiness. So hopefully I'll be able to get more of this series this year. On the shelf below that, we have volumes one all the way to 31 of Slam Dunk Complete by Takiko Inoue. Again, another series that's really hard to find right now. This is my first manga collection video, I think, in the whole coronavirus manga surge you know, thing they've been saying. So it's kind of hard to say, you know, pick up the series just because it's not readily available. But nevertheless, my favorite sports series of all time. I love basketball, if you guys don't know. And just the artwork, the fast paced basketball action, the comedy and the story are just so great in Slam Dunk. It's a nice, easy, fun, fast read. And I would highly recommend this to any fan of basketball or sports in general. Next to that, we have volumes one through five of Strain by Burnson. Again, art by Ryuichi Ikigami, the um, author behind series such as Sanctuary that I just talked about. This series is really weird, and I mean really weird. It's not the best manga series I've ever read. In fact, I think I talked about it in like my least favorite manga series that I have in my collection video, if you guys haven't seen that, but still enjoy this for what it was. It was a fun read, just completely ridiculous, but not the absolute pinnacle of quality by any means. Then below that, we have, on the contrary, one of my favorite series of all time. We have volumes 1 through 23 of One Punch Man. You can see I have the um, San Diego Comic Con and Loot Crate exclusives of volume 1 as well. But One Punch Man, again, just an amazing series. Yusuke Murata's artwork just brings one story to a completely new level. Just so funny. I love the comedy, how it's like a spoof shonen series about superheroes. Um, just amazing series, and I cannot wait for every single one of these volumes to come out. We don't get them too often, but when they do, it's one of my favorite reads of the entire month for sure. Next to that, we have Kariko Dojo Ultimo, volumes 1 through 12 complete, with concept by Stan Lee, rest in peace, 
and art uh, by Hiroaki Takei, and I believe he did the story as well. This was one of the first manga series that I ever read, I believe back in middle school. I read the first few volumes of this, and it's become a pretty desirable grail series for a lot of people, I'm assuming because uh, Stan Lee is a tie to it. And then Takei also made series such as Shaman King, which are beloved and sought after by out-of-print collectors as well. But uh, yeah, Ultimo is not the best series I've ever read, but still a pretty interesting piece of manga history and definitely one of the highlights in my manga collection. And moving on to the final shelf on this bookcase, we have volumes 1 all the way to 26, Light and Dark of Batum. This is complete. I recently finished this series physically with volume 23 and these two volume 26s in a recent manga unboxing. Haven't started this yet, but just because a lot of these volumes are starting to go out of print, such as volume uh, 17 becoming pretty expensive online, um, I decided that I needed to pick up this series before it got absolutely crazy and more of the volumes started going out of print and for insane money online. Heard some good things about this. It's apparently like kind of like a Battle Royale clone, but more futuristic. And I've heard it's not quite as good as Battle Royale, but I've still heard some great things about it. So I'm looking forward to giving this a chance sometime in the near future. Next to that, we have volumes one and two of Planetest by Makoto Yurikamura, the author of Vinland Saga. A lot of you guys have probably read Vinland Saga, but have not checked out Planetest. And all I have to say is you guys need to fix that immediately because this is such a slept on underrated series that is just so great. A fantastic sci-fi series that has an accurate depiction of humanity in the future as we venture towards space with some great grounded human emotion and delve into the human condition and mental illness. Just overall a fantastic series that I don't see enough people talking about because it's just fantastic. Next to that we have a little bit of my Satoshi Kon manga. We have Satoshi Kon's Opus and Seraphim. Personally this is a hot take. I prefer Seraphim. I just think it is so beautifully done. I'll show a little bit of the artwork here but it's just absolutely amazing dystopian manga. Opus is a great piece of metafiction, but personally, as far as enjoyment goes, I just enjoyed Seraphim a little bit more. On the top here, we have Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin, or I guess Mobile Suit Gundam The Last Outpost Complete, volumes one through three. Uh, once I watch Gundam Wing, I'm gonna get into this one, but you know, I just have this for the time being. Haven't read it yet, of course, but when the time comes, I'll get to it. So behind the double stack, behind Batum here, we have volumes 1 through 18 of Naoki Urasawa's Monster in the beautiful Viz singles. Again, another one of my manga grails, even though I don't think Monster is as good as 20th Century Boys, like I've said earlier, and I say quite a lot on the channel, actually makes a lot of people mad, but guys, you're getting it all wrong. I love Monster. I think it's a great thriller series. Um, just some great characters like Tenma and Johan, one of the best manga villains of all time. And again, I love these beautiful Viz editions. So glad to have these in my collection. Got a great deal from a viewer actually of the channel. So shout out to you, you know who you are. But yeah, super blessed to have volumes 113 of Monster, a really great manga series that I think everybody should read at one point or another in their manga collecting journey. Next to that, we have one of my favorites of all time, Takiko Inoue's Real Volumes 1 through 15. This is up to date with Volume 15 recently coming out. Uh, just another great basketball series by Takiko Inoue, but completely different from Slam Dunk. This deals with wheelchair basketball and is a lot more character driven than Slam Dunk. You know, less comedy, less action, but arguably even a better series that I, I know a lot of people enjoy more than Slam Dunk. Personally, I like Slam Dunk more, but Real is just such an amazing series and definitely in my top 20 manga series of all time. Check it out if you haven't already. Also, right beside Real here on the other end of my bookcase, we have my two One Piece box sets, box set one and box set three of One Piece. All the One Piece volumes are inside their box sets just because I prefer to uh, save space, as you guys can probably tell. It's running pretty low at the moment, but again, One Piece is in my top five manga of all time. Absolutely love it everything about it. I'm missing box set two, but I have all the volumes, which I'll get to a little bit later. And uh, yeah, not enough good things to say about One Piece. The box sets are just kind of chilling here next to the shelf. All right, so coming over here to the final bookcase in this room right here, starting off on this white shelf, we have my small but very cool Osamu Tezuka manga collection, starting off with the Ayako hardcover. I don't see enough people talking about this as far as Osamu Tezuka goes. This is a truly underrated manga, very strange, but still highly enjoyable, pretty complex, but intriguing story. I would highly recommend this series to everybody who's interested. Next to that, we have one of the only 10 out of 10 masterpiece manga in my entire collection that I've ever read, Message to Adolf. I know a lot of you guys 
have this in your collection and have not read it yet because it got reprinted. You picked it up after hearing great things, but you just haven't gotten to this one yet. You know, I'm calling you out watching this video. You need to read this series. Just so beautifully done in every aspect. A little bit of a slow burn, but trust me, the payoff is worth it. One of the best manga endings of all time, in my opinion. Just a classic manga series I think everybody should read because it's still very relevant in our world today. Next to that, we have Buddha volumes one through eight in these hardcovers here. This is a really interesting story as it follows the life of Buddha, you know, from basically birth to his enlightenment and death and all that in between. A really interesting series. Um, again, kind of a slow burn, as is with most of Osama Tezuka's manga, but still a pretty enjoyable one, nevertheless. Highly recommend this one as well. Next to my Tezuka stuff behind this cute little figure that my friend got for me in Japan, we have volumes 1 through 13 of Grand Blue Dreaming. Just a really funny manga series about, you know, college kids drinking, getting naked, just doing all sorts of crazy shenanigans at college. A really fun series. Nothing too serious, but there still are some pretty fun moments in this. I highly recommend this one. It's one of the most well-regarded comedy manga of all time. So, you know, there's definitely some quality aspects to this series. It's not for everybody, but for me, I really enjoy it. Down below that, we have my Inyo Asano manga collection. One of my favorite manga of all time. So I had to get all this stuff put out in English physically as of the time of recording this video. Hopefully get some more stuff in the future here. But starting off here, we have Nijigahara Holograph in the hardcover. Most, his most experimental manga by far. Just really interesting, kind of hard to follow at times, but still a pretty unique story nevertheless. Next to that, we have Downfall, uh, a pretty somber manga, which is a little bit of a window into Inosano's personal life as it follows a struggling manga who can't quite find the success they had earlier in his career, uh, just kind of suffers from depression. Um, again, a pretty somber manga series, not for everybody, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. Next to that, we have Wonderful World, Volumes 1 through 2 complete. Uh, volume 1 is extremely hard to find right now, and I would say it's probably not worth the price that people are asking. Uh, it's a decent short story collection in two volumes, but definitely nothing too, too special, but still pretty good nevertheless. Next to that, we have my favorite Inyo Asano manga, and undoubtedly his best of all time. We have Dead Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction. Um, this is volumes 1 through 10, which is currently up to date. Again, we don't get these volumes too often, but whenever they do come out, I read them right away and enjoy it every single time. Just a great sci-fi series, starts off kind of a slice of life, but progressively gets darker and darker and more complex in story. Just so intriguing. Also some social commentary. Uh, it's just a great time. Absolutely love it. Next to that, we have Solon in this one book right here. I believe this is two volumes in one, but a great series about the joy of making music as well as, you know, dealing with loss. So it's not a happy-go-lucky series, but not quite as dark as this series right here. Good Night Pun Pun, obviously his most famous manga and a lot of people's favorite Inyo Asano manga. I really love this series. The first three volumes are just painfully relatable, you know, as it goes from childhood to uh, high school life. And then as it goes on, it just gets progressively more deranged and dark as it goes on. So not for everybody. Uh, a lot of people say it's really depressing. I didn't get depressed by this. I didn't even think it was very sad. But you know, to each their own, still really enjoyed Goodnight Pun Pun. Next to that, we have a series that I did not quite enjoy as much. In fact, I really didn't enjoy much at all. We have Inosano's Girl on the Shore. Um, it's a pretty quick read. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but I mean, some people really like this. A lot of people absolutely despise this book right here, so I can't recommend it. Um, but if you want to give it a try, I mean, nothing's really stopping you. Go ahead. Next to that, we have My Broken Mariko by Waka Hirako. Um, this is a Yen Press hardcover that I found at my local store and decided to give it a try after having heard nothing about this. And I was pleasantly surprised. If you're a fan of Ino Asano, definitely check this out because it's kind of similar in tone and a really good manga. Next to that, we have my Naruto Volume 1 Collector's Edition. This is just such a beautiful book and also a pretty rare one as well. I really enjoyed Naruto as I read it a couple months ago, and while I actually sold off my Naruto singles, I decided that I wanted to keep this volume one right here, just as kind of a reminder that, you know, I've actually read Naruto and really enjoyed it. Um, I actually didn't enjoy the first few chapters of Naruto that much, which is what's in this volume, but it's still a reminder of just such a fun shonen series that I really enjoyed. And this is definitely a grail for a lot of Naruto fans, so very blessed to have this. Next to that, we have Disappearance Diary by Hidoizuma. Um, a Gekiko work about this mangaka, 
kind of in the Tezuka era who decided to just say fuck it and abandon his job, became basically like a nomad, eating out of the trash, laying down gas pipe at one point and becoming an alcoholic. Um, really dark synopsis, I guess, but it's done in such a fun and cartoonish way that's very digestible. Highly recommend this one. And then next to that, we have volume one of Shadow Lady, This is Dangerous Love. I believe this is by the mangaka of Eyes. This is a really interesting one that I actually read last night about kind of this magical girl who is really shy during the day and she transforms to this thief at night called Shadow Lady. It's just her two sides of life and kind of this romance aspect that are really interesting. Definitely need to get the rest of this pretty soon here. All right, so coming down below that, we have volumes one through 16 of Siren. This series just means so much to me personally. Again, similar to Ultimo, this is one of the first manga series that I ever read back when I was in middle school. You know, while you people were on the playground at elementary school playing Naruto, playing Dragon Ball, me and my friends were playing Siren. I know that is a completely bombastic statement, but it is absolutely true. Um, had a lot of fun reading this manga as a child, and I decided to pick it up a couple years ago and just complete the story because I never finished as a kid. And it's just so underrated, completely unique from a lot of other shonen manga. It's more character driven than action. And uh, yeah, nothing but praise for Siren. A lot of you guys need to give this a try if you're looking for something different in the shonen landscape of manga. Next to that, we have Sundame Volumes 1 through 8. I realize this is out of order. I deeply apologize for that. I always watch manga collections, and when I see that, I'm like, how do you have them out of order? But now I finally fall in victim. But despite all that, Cinema is a great manga. Recently rebought this after everything sold it and regretted it deeply. So I finally have this in my collection again. Really weird, perverted, uh, deranged manga for sure. So not for everybody. But if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then I can't say pick it up because it's a very expensive, rare manga. But definitely give it a try online for sure. Next to that, we have Sergeant Frog, volumes 1 through 4, 6, 10, 11 and 16. Some random volumes of Sergeant Frog that I picked up a while back. I wanted to get into this manga just because it was one of my first anime that I ever watched and really got me into this whole medium of entertainment. So decided I want to give this a try. Haven't gotten into these yet, but I've heard some great things specifically about the Sergeant Frog manga. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. So behind Siren and those other volumes, we have arguably my favorite shelf in my entire manga collection. Of course, this is my Tayo Matsumoto collection. Starting off here with Ping Pong, Volumes 1 through 2 complete in these absolutely beautiful Viz editions. Um, just so well done. Viz, you'll notice a trend with a lot of these volumes that Viz does for Taya Matsumoto. The quality is just second to none. They put so much respect for his manga when they put them out physically, and I cannot give them enough credit for that because he is one of the most unique and underrated manga, I believe, that exist today. So I recommend all these series we're going to get into, but... Ping Pong starting off is just such an amazing sports series, one of my favorites in my top 10. Very full of emotion and really brings out the vigor and competitiveness of sports. Um, really enjoy this one, definitely recommend it. Next to that we have Cats of the Louvre, which is super unique about these cats who live in the attic of the Louvre, the most famous art museum in the world. And then the janitor believes that his sister, who disappeared when he was a child, lives in the paintings. It's just so surreal really enjoyable and uh, yeah, highly underrated as well. Next to that, we have volumes one through six complete of Sunny about this orphanage uh, child's home. We get a little window into each of these child's lives as they deal with, you know, sadness of, you know, not having their parents with them, but also hope and just the childhood innocence that they all have. Just a really chill, great series. Again, cannot recommend it enough. Next to that, we have number five by Taya Matsumoto. These volumes are recently being put out by Viz. And again, these absolutely beautiful editions. I'm waiting for the last volume to come out before I start reading this, but I've heard it's just absolutely crazy. The artwork um, for Taya Matsumoto, it's even, I would say better than the rest. It's just so unique. Apparently the story is really wacky. So I'm looking forward to getting into this one when that volume comes out. Next to that, we have Go Go Monster. Probably the most beautiful book in my entire collection with these beautiful pages and the pattern on there, just the wraparound colors and just mural on it are amazing. Uh, again, really strange, really unique, and I enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. Um, I'll have to reread it just because it's been a while, but it's definitely one of the most unique things that I've ever read. Next to that, we have Black and White, AKA Take on Kingcrete volumes one through three in these pulp singles here. Uh, I just prefer this edition to the all-in-one just because the paper quality is better and it's easier to hold in my hand. 
But uh, yeah, great series. I wouldn't say it's his best, probably my least favorite Taiyo Matsumoto manga, but still a fun time regardless. Moving on from the Matsumoto stuff, we have Uzumaki, volumes 1 through 3 in the Pulp Singles. Love this edition, just the colors and the textures on these spines are really great. It does make it kind of a standout compared to the um, classic Viz hardcover from my manga collection. I think it makes it a little bit more unique. Um, I enjoy this quite a bit. It's not too scary, but still a unique piece of manga history and really interesting and fun to read. Next to that, we have Shortcuts Volumes 1 and 2. Um, just a bunch of short one-page, I guess, stories. Really funny, really uh, sexual humor, but I still think it's pretty funny. I've read the first volume, I still need to get to the second one, but it's just such a fun time, really unique series. I guess we have one more Taiyo Matsumoto manga, actually. We have Blue Spring, which is a collection of short stories about delinquents who really don't really know what they're doing in life. Uh, just a whole bunch of variety. Some of the series, or I guess some of the stories are really good in this, others kind of miss for me, so it's still a decent read, but definitely not for everybody. Next to that, we have a true sleeper manga series. We have Tokyo Tribes by Santa Inoue, basically about these gangs in Tokyo that are just feuding. Um, <laughs> one like drives tanks down the streets, one of like carries samurai swords everywhere. It's just completely ridiculous. Um, one through six is all we got in English, but by Tokyo Pop, and I cannot find a translation for this literally anywhere on the internet. So I'm either gonna have to learn Japanese or just wait till somebody does it. Some great soul does it for me. But uh, until then, one through six, I'm glad to have this in my collection because it's just so unique. Next to that, we have even a monkey can draw manga, another pulp manga. I believe this is more like comic style. Um, haven't gone to this one yet, but I've heard that it's pretty funny and unique as well. And on the final shelf here, the first thing we have is Viz Big's 1 through 8 of Rurouni Kenshin. This has been basically my most recent manga collecting binge, I guess you could say, where I'm just compulsively buying all these when I find them for a good price, wanting to complete this series uh, in this Viz Big format. Again, I don't have volume 9 just because it is dumb expensive, but I'm so glad to have volumes 1 through 8. Just a beautiful edition. Love these spines with all the different pictures of Kenshin. Um, yeah, I've heard some great things about this, one of the best shonen series and samurai series of all time, according to a lot of people. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting into this classic manga that's honestly kind of surprising I haven't gotten into as of yet. Next to that, we have Classroom of the Elite, volumes one through seven, the light novels. I've read all of these and this is my favorite light novel by far. Uh, it's also the only light novel that I've ever read but I just find it hard to see anything coming close to this other than like Monogatari, which I'll get to a little bit later. Um, but yeah, Classroom of the is just so good. Psychological light novel series with lots of drama and suspense and some really interesting characters. Um, highly recommend this if you want to get into light novels or if you're just a light novel fan who hasn't read this yet, this is about as good as it gets. Next to that, we have Offered Volumes 1 and 2 by Kazuo Koke, the author of Lone Wolf and Cub, illustrated by, again, Ryuichi Ikigami. Haven't gotten to this one yet, but a viewer recently sent me Volume 2, so I can complete this set, and uh, yeah, very grateful for that. At only two volumes, I'm going to give it a try. Even though I haven't heard it's amazing, I still think it's worth a shot, so I'll give this one a try pretty soon here. And behind those volumes, as you can see here, we have Battle Angel Lita in the Viz singles, Volumes 1 through 9, and then the singles of Battle Angel Lita, Last Order, Volumes 1 through 19. This is by far one of my favorite sci-fi manga of all time. Alita is just such a badass character, and this manga just has such a unique environment. Uh, really just a treat for all sci-fi fans. If you guys have not checked out Alita, it's an absolute classic, and I highly recommend it. I would say Alita is better than Last Order, but Last Order is still a very faithful sequel. And I mean, just look at these volumes, man. This rainbow of colors, absolutely beautiful. It's quite a shame that... Kodansha got the license and completely fucked up the vibe with those volumes to finish off the series, but you know, what can you do? Next to that, we have Astro Lost in Space, another slept on shonen series, only five volumes long. You just gotta check it out. It's really interesting. It's about these kids who go on a field trip to space and this black hole thing eats them up and they become stranded in space, or I guess lost in space. Ah, yeah, I see where the title comes from. But uh, yeah, it's just a fun time as they try to get back home with a very dark and interesting twist at the halfway point. Um, I should also mention there's like this imposter trying to kill them all, but they don't know who it is. So they're trying to figure it out. But yeah, super interesting manga. 
in a short one at that. Low commitment, but still very highly enjoyable. Next to that, we have Voice of a Distant Star by uh, Makoto Shinkai, the creator of Your Name, Weathering With You, you know. Um, Voice of a Distant Star also has a movie, her it's not very good. And as for the manga, it's decent. Um, nothing I really recommend, but still a pretty interesting uh, short, quick read. Next to that, we have uh, Super Dimensional Love Gun. This is just such a weird volume. Um, put out by Faku, I believe, or Denpa. Yeah, Denpa, but Faku pushes this. Um, yeah, if that tells you anything, it's really, it's just strange. It's definitely for mature audiences only, not for kids by any means. Again, I can't show you inside of it just because this video will get taken down. But uh, if it sounds like something interesting to you, then I guess go in at your own risk. Uh, next to that, the final volumes I have here, here is all my One Piece that uh, I couldn't put like on the shelf or anything like that. I want the second One Piece box set, just the box. If any of you guys out there are willing to sell it to me so I can put these volumes away, I would love you forever. Uh, leave a comment or DM me on Instagram or Twitter so we can make a deal because I need that second box ASAP as these volumes are just sitting out here in the open. Drives me nuts. Now we have Heavenly, Delu Heavenly Delusion, the second volume of Rose of Versailles, this beautiful volume here. And then the Akira hardcover box set. Love this series, love this release. So glad this is no longer like a holy grail $500 series to collect in the box set just because um, it's such nice quality. I'm so glad more people are finally getting to experience the Akira manga as opposed to the anime film, which is just absolute trash. Next to that, we have the Dragon Ball Complete manga box set as well as Dragon Ball Z. Read this recently, absolutely love it. Dragon Ball is just super nostalgic for me, you know, watched as a kid on, I believe it was Toonami or Four Kids every Saturday morning. And having finally read this manga was just such a treat, such a fun manga. One of the best shonen I think everybody needs to experience at some point. All right, so here we are at my college apartment again, where the second half of my manga collection is. As you can see here, I have two shelves and a lot of the stuff is going to be things that I have read before that I want to revisit soon. Just some all time favorites as well as a lot of stuff that I have not gotten to yet. What I'll do is I'll take something that I haven't read yet and I'll bring it up here and cycle that with something that I read and bring it back home and uh, vice versa. So we'll go ahead and get started on the first shelf here. We have volumes one through three of Fist of the North Star and these absolutely beautiful Viz hardcovers. I picked these up recently off of Reddit. So very lucky to have gotten a great deal for those. Speaking of getting a great deal, something I got yesterday for an amazing price is volumes one through 15 of Gunslinger Girl in these omnibuses. These are very hard to find nowadays. A lot of people are looking for these and spending a lot of money on these really nice um, Seven Seas omnibuses. So yeah, I got these from actually a viewer of the channel and I got a great deal on these again. So this is one of my grails that I wanted to get by the end of 2022 and I have it like a couple months in. So this is definitely one of my favorite pickups of the entire year so far. Next to that, we have another really interesting pickup. We have Iron Walk Jan, uh, some mis miscellaneous volumes, um, one through 26, of course, missing about seven volumes in there. Um, if you guys know Weabra, he's been picking up this series and talking it uh, up a lot. He's been calling this peak fiction, and I don't know if I believe that, but it still has me pretty interested to give this series a try. Um, again, a rare out-of-print series by Comics One, so you don't see these very often. Uh, some of these volumes have pretty bad fading, but you know, finding a complete set of this manga is very hard, but I'm hoping to accomplish that somewhat this year. Moving on to the shelf below that, we have my Vinland Saga manga. Um, I also have some Dragon Ball figures, which I'll show off, you know, as we get to the shelf. We have uh, Team Gohan, I believe Grandista, and then this Dragon Ball Legends Trunks figure, my favorite character, but we'll move him aside so you can see Vinland Saga volumes 1 through 12. This is an example of just one of my favorite series that I decided to bring up if I wanted to reread, which I might very well do as volume 12 recently came out about a month ago. Um, so I've definitely forgotten a lot about Vinland Saga, but I do remember that this is one of my favorite series of all time, and I believe in my top five, maybe even top three. So yeah, this is one of my favorite series of all time. Just a series that needs no introduction. I'm sure a lot of you guys have watched the anime or read this manga, but Vinland Saga is just absolutely incredible. Next to that, or I guess on the shelf below that, we have One Piece volumes 70 through 91, with the exception of a couple of volumes, um, missing volume 72, 74, and 75. Uh, I'm currently on volume 74. I'm reading it on the Shonen Jump app, but you know, those volumes have just been out of stock for so long. So 
Uh, yeah, One Piece, again, one of my favorite series of all time. One that I'm currently reading through, again, on volume 74. So I'm in Gastrosa right now. A great arc so far, really dark. And, uh, you know, One Piece never fails to, you know, bring something fresh and new with every single arc. So really enjoying this series. Um, it's very rare for a series to go over 70 volumes and have me, you know, constantly be engaged. So only series like One Piece can meet that high quality that I come to expect. Next to that, we have Spy Family Volumes 1 through 5. This is a really, really fun uh, Shonen Jump series that's currently ongoing, I believe. I think Volume 6 and maybe 7 have come out by now. I've only read the first two volumes, but I've really enjoyed what I've read this series. It's a perfect blend of action, comedy, you know, just wholesome cuteness. Really has it all and just a really fun series that I've been enjoying recently. Next to that, we have the Monogatari Light Novel box set. This is Season 1. Um, yeah, I got this a while ago. I haven't read it still. Above that, we have two volume ones that I haven't read yet, Record of Ragnarok and Master Mundi Kun's Revenge. Then behind this absolute unit, uh, Z Broly statue, I'll move him for a minute. We have a really, really underrated manga series that I read recently called Twin Spica. Twin Spica is basically this little slice of life series about a girl who wants to become an astronaut and follow her dreams. There's also a supernatural aspect to it, which is really interesting. Um, just a really wholesome and motivational series um, that I really enjoyed. And I think a lot more people should give a try because I just hear nothing about this series. And it is so great. I read this recently and it landed itself in my top 20 manga of all time, which is definitely not easy, especially for a slice of life series. But yeah, Twin Spica, absolutely amazing. It's really hard to find as it is uh, put out by Vertical, which are notorious for having lots of out of print series. But still, nevertheless, give this one a try if you can. It is absolutely fantastic. Next to that, we have uh, Eminon Volume 2. Um, I have Volume 1, but I'm actually lending it to a friend right now, so I don't have it for this video. But Eminon is a very short, um, I guess, story about this girl who has memories dating back to the dawn of life on Earth, which is really interesting. So, uh, yeah, I won't get into it too much, but still a very interesting, thought-provoking, but yet short manga read that I highly recommend. Next to that, we have Spice and Wolf, some light novels I got at my local store. Um, I won't go through them all, but I haven't started this one yet. I read a little bit of the manga, which I really enjoyed, and I've decided to go on and try the light novel, just because I feel like it's the better adaptation from what I've heard, so I'm looking forward to getting into this one. We also have ReZero Light Novel Volume 1, which I actually got yesterday from the used store. Again, I read a little bit of the ReZero manga and really enjoyed it, so I think that um, I really will enjoy the light novel when I get into it. Uh, I'm just gonna put that on top. Uh, speaking of things that I have to get into, we have some more stuff that I haven't read yet. Solo Leveling Volumes 1 and 2. I've just heard amazing things about this webtoon. One of my friends, actually one of my roommates at this apartment really loves Solo Leveling, so I'm gonna give this one a try and hopefully I will enjoy it. Next we have Dream Fossil, which is actually sent to me by Tony Reed's manga um, for the manga tuber Secret Santa thing. Um, this is by Satoshi Kon, a collection of short stories. I enjoyed Opus and Tropic of the Sea a little bit, and I really like Seraphim, so I'm looking forward to getting into this one eventually. Um, below that, we have some records I'm trying to sell, as well as my Dragon Ball fig arts, as well as uh, some other things over here, if you may have seen that. But I'm just going to leave those alone for this video. Um, coming up to the other bookcase on the top shelf here, behind this uh, Super Saiyan Broly movie figure that's falling apart on me as I take it. Oh, that was a really high screech. Sorry if you heard that. But we have Eden, It's an Endless World, volumes 1 through 14. One of my absolute favorite series of all time. It is extremely in-depth uh, with its world, its characters, its storytelling. A little bit complex. In fact, a lot of complexity goes along with this story. But if you can follow it or if you want to, you know, think a little bit, it's not a turn your brain off and read series. This one requires a lot of thought. But if you do decide to give this series a shot, you're going to find one of the greatest sci-fi epics ever told for sure. Next to that, we have Tan Penshu Volumes 1 and 2. This is a short story collection put out by Hiroki Endo, the author of Eden, It's an Endless World. I was really impressed by this short story collection. It's very human feeling and it's very diverse in the stories that it tells. I won't get too into it just because there's a huge variety of the story it tells. A lot of science fiction if you're into that, which if you read Eden, you probably are. But again, I would highly recommend this. I believe also a series that falls into my top 20 manga and it's not even really like story driven. It's just a collection of short stories, which says a lot about the quality. Next to that, we have Blam Volumes 1 through 10, the Tokyo Pop Singles by Tsutomu Nihei. This is one of my favorite sets. My entire manga collection 
Just such an amazing series. Um, I know a lot of people prefer the Master Editions, but I just really love all the covers and just, you know, the handheld size of these volumes. One of my favorite sci-fi series. I'm a big sci-fi fan. And uh, yeah, not enough great things to say about Blam. It's very, you know, world driven, I guess, as opposed to text. And I guess characters, you know, it requires a lot of thought on your end to fill in the blanks and, you know, follow along with this very interesting and dark world that is painted by Nihei. Some great architecture, um, great artwork, great character design, just an all around fantastic series. Besides that, we have this little Zaku that I got at uh, Disney Springs in Florida randomly when I was there this past year. But besides Blam, we have Japan by Bernstein, illustrated by Kentaro Mira, the author, or I guess the artist of Berserk. As you can see, um, very reminiscent of Casca and Guts on the cover there. This was pretty decent. I see a lot of people crap on this. I think on Mal, this doesn't even have like a six on my animalist out of 10, which is insane because I actually kind of enjoy this a little bit. It's very blatant Japanese propaganda, but it was still pretty enjoyable and wacky. And of course, great Miria artwork, rest in peace. Next to that, we have uh, some random stuff. We have Big Hero 6. My friend knows I like manga, so he got this for me for my birthday. Uh, truly, truly peak fiction here. Next to that, we have a Love Love at 14, uh, volume three that is in Spanish that I bought off accident thinking I was getting a good deal and uh, I can't even read it. So kind of disappointing. And then we have the Vampire Hunter D light novel, volume one. Haven't gotten to this one yet, but I recently watched Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, the movie from 2000, which I really enjoyed. So it has me excited to get into that. Below that, I realized I just moved the Trunks figure over. So we'll move him back and uh, we'll also move this Android 13 figure. And as you can see, we have Berserk volumes one all the way to volume 40, which is currently up to date. I think we're getting volume 41 here pretty soon in Japan or maybe in the US. I think it actually already came out in Japan as of recording this. But again, a series that really needs no introduction. Berserk, one of the most famous and critically acclaimed manga of all time. And I just absolutely love these uh, DMP single volumes. Pretty hard to find, but I just love how that logo looks on the bottom when it all matches up. But uh, yeah, really nothing I can say about Berserk that hasn't already been said. Just an absolute classic, fantastic action, artwork, and storytelling. The Golden Age arc is my favorite manga arc from this entire series. And honestly, my favorite manga arc in all of manga period that I've ever read. Just absolutely fantastic. The dynamic between Guts and Griffith, just so great. I don't think that the later parts of it, like when you're getting into Falcon Millennium and Fantasia are all that good. I would give them like a six or a seven. You know, I think they kind of drag and it kind of loses sight what really made Berserk really great in the early halves, but still a very enjoyable series nevertheless and one of my favorites of all time. So coming down below that, right behind uh, Goku here. See, I told you there are gonna be a lot of Dragon Ball figures in this video, but speaking of one of my favorite series of all time, we have the favorite series of the Prom G in these singles here, Gantz. Volumes 1 all the way to 37 in the very rare, out of print, and uh, desirable singles here. Gantz is just amazing. I mean, I've said it time and time again, this is my favorite series of all time for so many reasons. It's so wacky and crazy with its story. The action is fantastic. The artwork is amazing. And the thing that really sells me on the series is the amazing pacing. There's not a whole lot of, you know, text in these volumes, so they just go really fast and it's really easy to get addicted to this series right here, which is what I found myself uh, falling into as I was collecting it. You know, I would buy, you know, a volume for like $30 and then I wouldn't have, you know, a couple of volumes after that. So it was really hard to collect and read the series at the same time, just because they're so hard to get and you want to keep reading. But this is definitely the highlight of my manga collection as a whole and just such an amazing accomplishment for me as a manga collector. Super happy to have these. Below that here, we have Gogeta, Grandista figure, and this cooler, a figure that is just absolutely massive and heavy, but I'll move him down here for a bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Toriko volumes one through 43. This is a kind of recent pickup that I got completely random at my half price books. They had almost all of these volumes, except for like three, I think, which weren't the rare ones, thank God. But now I finally have this series complete. I've been reading it this month. I'm currently up to volume 16, I believe, is what I have to read next. But Toriko is a really underrated shonen series. Um, it basically deals with these hunters who are looking for the most rare and delectable gourmet foods and animals in this wide, expansive world. It's kind of like a mixture between Hunter x Hunter 
and uh, One Piece, actually I think in Hunter x Hunter they have gourmet hunters, so that's basically what Toriko is all about, but really interesting, some great characters, great action. Um, I know the mangaka himself was not a very good person, but I did pick up these all used, so I don't feel bad really about reading this. I can separate the art from the artist, but I'm really glad to finally have this complete set in my manga collection so I could finally read it, as I've really been enjoying it recently. That is the end of the manga. Uh, if you want to see down here, we have my Blu-ray collection, a bunch of movies, as you can see here, and anime as we go along. And then we also have two figures here, still in the box. These are the Dor Hidoro. Three zero figures uh, came in, or I guess came in, and uh, Shin here. Uh, really nice figures, and I've been getting more into figures recently, so these are definitely highlights in my collection. But yeah, that is all of the manga that I have in my entire collection. It kind of sucks that I have to go in between two places like this, um, you know, transport things back and forth, and of course, split up the video into two parts, which is kind of inconvenient, but still, I just absolutely love everything in my mom collection. I'm just super happy with where I'm at. I believe a little bit over a thousand volumes in total at this point, and just so much great quality and things that I absolutely love that I'm just so proud to own. So I hope you guys did enjoy seeing my mom collection, seeing everything I have on my shelves, everything I've read, all these series that I love to death so much. Let me know in the comments below if you've read anything in my manga collection, anything you think that I should add that I would like. I'm always open to manga suggestions. And of course, if this is the first video of mine that you were seeing, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. Always putting out quality manga content for you guys to enjoy and your guys' support just means so much to me. So yeah, that's basically going to wrap it up for this manga collection video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Hopefully I will see you in the next one.